Hi, I'm here with Rabbi Michael Lerner. We just heard an amazing presentation uh, about really true hope, and I wonder if you could tell a little bit about the Global Marshall Plan. The plan is one uh, to dedicate 1 to 2 percent of the gross domestic product of the United States each year for the next 20 to once and for all end domestic and global poverty, homelessness, hunger, inadequate education, inadequate health care. And by, we can do that with 1 to 2 percent of the gross domestic product of the United States, plus changing local arrangements of trade so that we're no longer privileging the West but instead taking care of and helping uh, to support the development of agriculture in third world countries. Um, to do that, and to do that in a spirit of generosity, understanding that this is the best, best path for homeland security. That is, this is a, the best strategy for making Americans secure, is not to dominate and control people all over the world, but instead to act in a spirit of generosity and caring. So we call this the strategy of generosity. The strategy of generosity is far more effective than the strategy of domination. And uh, I hope that people who get that that's true and understand that our well-being as Americans depends on the well-being of everyone else on the planet in the 21st century and the well-being of the planet itself, that people who recognize that come and work with us and help build the Global Marshall Plan, which you can find on the web at www.spiritualprogressives.org. Spiritual Progressives because we believe that the bottom line in America should not only be money and power, that, but institutions should be judged efficient, rational, and productive, uh, also to the extent that they generate love and caring and kindness and generosity and ethical and ecological san sanity and enhance our capacity to respond to the universe with awe and wonder at the grandeur of creation. Do you have a question you'd like to ask me? Yeah, I'd like to ask you what it would take to, um, uh, to reach the people in the Carolinas in such a way that they could understand that liberals and progressives of a spiritual sort are actually articulating their highest values and that we have a great deal in common with them uh, instead of seeing uh, people from, for example, California, where I come from, as weird and from a different planet. How can we build solidarity with people in the Carolinas? We have some tremendous faith communities that would very much love to hear that message. And uh, what I'm, with, with this video blog, I'm going to make sure that people in the Carolinas start to hear that message. And then I think what we need to do is have opportunities for people like you and Reverend Campolo and others to come and actually talk about the realistic possibility of this. Which brings up the next question I was going to ask you, which is you really made a convincing case that uh, this isn't just idealistic, this is realistic and necessary and a winning strategy. Can you talk about that? Well, yes. Um, the, the, the truth is, is that almost everybody on the planet really wants a different kind of world. Everybody wants a world of love and kindness and generosity, but everybody is positive that they're the only ones who want it. And that everybody else is going to take advantage of them and dominate and control them if they start acting weak. And what we have to say is it's not weak to be loving and caring. That the, the message of the Bible, the message of the Gospels, the message of every spiritual tradition is, uh, has uh, survived for the last several thousand years because people desperately want to hear that message and want, to, want that kind of a world. But they've all been indoctrinated into a different kind of worldview that says real, to be realistic is to dominate and control others. And if you don't do that, somebody will dominate and control you. So, um, so actually, um, our strategy of, um, of explicitly calling for a world based on generosity and kindness and taking it into a concrete way with global Marshall Plans. So we've got, we have a specific piece of legislation that's now uh, been introduced into the Congress, House Resolution 1078. Uh, 20 Congress people have already endorsed it. This is a concrete way of saying that our biblical and spiritual values belong not only in church and synagogue, in mosque, in ashram, they to belong in the public arena and that we want to change the public arena with a new bottom line of love. Would you ask me another question? Uh, yeah, I'd like to ask you whether um, it's possible for uh, people in the in Carolinas, in the, in the, with the Christian world there, to hear a rabbi and not think, oh, well, he's, because he doesn't believe that Jesus is God, therefore he has nothing worthy to say. To be honest, in some parts of the Carolinas, that would be difficult. I mean, we have some communities where there's such a uh, traditional um, conservative view of Christianity as the only acceptable religion that that would be difficult. But the Carolinas um, have a rapidly changing and evolving population, and I really believe that 
uh, we could find you some places to start to, to plant a seed and some acceptance. Where I live in Chapel Hill, I'm certainly in the Greater Triangle area, uh, where there are many faith communities that work across lines of difference in faith, and, and it would be very welcoming to hear that. And, uh, and then even networks like uh, People of Faith Against the Death Penalty, a, um, a statewide network with people from multiple faith traditions, I could certainly be willing to do that. Well, I hope you'll invite me down. I would like to. My, my last question for you is, uh, if you could have one wish of our next president, President Obama, and yes. have that wish fulfilled, what would it be? Um, for him to unambiguously and without hesitation <laughs> embrace the, uh, the, the Global Marshall Plan and make that the center of his uh, of his can uh, of his candidates of his uh, presidency, and to make it you know, um, not just in technical terms, but to talk about and make central the spirit of generosity as the central core of human security. Would you like to ask one closing question? Yeah, if, uh, my closing question is um, um, how can we um, bring more people like you into contact with other progressive voices so that, the, um, so that a spiritual and religious consciousness in the progressive world is strengthened rather than isolated as it often is now? Well, I'll tell you, from who I saw here today, this audience was um, uh, predominantly white and predominantly over 50 years old. Yes. And I think that um, to reach out to people like me, people who are younger, um, to reach out to people from different cultural backgrounds, uh, you, you have to um, include young people in leadership roles, you have to give them a meaningful way to participate, and you have to make sure that um, their, whatever contributions that they make have a real impact that they can see so that there's something very concrete they feel like, I did this and I can say, stay involved and I will be the leader of this movement over the next generation. Wonderful. Yeah. I should say that we sent the invitation to this meeting to every single delegate and that went across all different faith communities and ethnic groups and racial groups and sexes and ages. So the people who came and the people who came. Um, so I, I hope more young people will select to come to this kind of consciousness and work with us. I hope so too. Okay. Thank you very Thanks. much. Okay, bye. Right. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. Still going.